Good day, gamers. Uh, a formal bust here, and... This is me, your boy, Yort, here from York Corp. And we're here with Our Gaming Life, a review, touch on, and look at our process of the games we play. Mm -hmm. But first, as always, most importantly, our sponsor, H2O, drink it up or die. It's already a part of you. Get some more. Or it will no longer be a part of you. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, so how do we want to start this off? Uh, I was actually uh, going to start just with what, like, what's your gaming process? Like, how do you select games to play? Is there certain things you look for, or is it just, oh, this thing looks slightly interesting to me? Let me try it out. Well, I, I can at least say for the process that I started with uh, the Alien Isolation series that I've started with is because I I try to do games I haven't done before mainly, or I try to do games that I think will challenge me in a certain way. Because mm -hmm. I typically like, you know, like in my own spare time, I'll play like an Assassin's Creed game or like a sandbox style game. But I wanted to pick a survival horror because it's something I am not good at. Mm -hmm. I am a, the biggest scaredy cat when it comes to games. And it's something I think would be entertaining to people to just watch me hide in, in like little lockers and just not understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but the same thing also, because I started doing um, an XCOM 2 playthrough as well. XCOM, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And uh, that's more of a strategy one, mm -hmm. which is also different than most like, you know, standard shooters or like mm -hmm. third person sandbox games, which are just, I, I play on my own time. But And, and I would say with XCOM 2, uh, I, I've played both XCOM 1 and 2. In XCOM 2, like, there's a bit of horror in there. Like, there's missions where it's like, save the civilians, and like, oh, half of them are getting killed every other turn. Oh, Some yeah. of them turn into giant flesh blobs. In, in the first one, the terror attacks were... They were, they, were, they, they were scary because, like, you'd have, like, the little chrysalids come in and, like, infect the civilians, and they'd turn into more chrysalids, and they'd keep attacking you. But now, like you're saying... They're, they have plants. They have plants. You go to, up to one, they can just immediately transform. Or, um, oh, it's so inconvenient because the civilians, God, the civilians are so inconvenient. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, I think it's, I like the aspect of you can't save everybody and that like, hey, yeah, you have 13 people on the field. You got to save six. Yep. Because each turn, like two or three of them are going down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my one gripe with XCOM, which is the only mod I have for the game, hmm. The amount of missions where it's like, hey, go to the extraction zone, and if not everyone gets there in time, you lose players. That is, because there's some, there's some missions where, like, I understand, it, like, oh, you're in a downtown area, you gotta get out in time. But then there's others, it's like, you're in the backwoods of nowhere, but you have to extract everyone within a certain amount of turns. I was like, mod, okay, they have one to disable it, let me turn that on and not deal with this ever again. There have been, like, two or three times, I've gotten, like, done to like, the last turn, yeah. and there's a guy just like... Okay, now I can go up. It's so silly, it's, but I, yeah. ah, it's annoying. Yeah. But um, the my main gripe about this, or not, I guess not a gripe, because it now makes me pick more between what I go do when it's like you go and you scan for supplies, or you have to go pick and go attack this soldier, or you have to go here and try and make contact for a couple days. It really makes you, it gives you more situations to pick from mm -hmm. rather than just. All right, now I'm waiting. Oh, alien abduction. Okay, waiting. Council mission. Okay, waiting. Now a thing flying over. Mm -hmm. This time it's like, you got to go pick up this guy. You have to do this, or you have to go do this. You can't do all three at once. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really, I enjoy it, but it makes it so much more difficult. Oh, oh, like XCOM too. They're like, hey, y'all fucked up in the first one, so here you go. You failed. Try I love, and win. I love that. I love that detail where it's like. Yeah, we're just going to assume you lost no, the first. No, no, not even assume. The, the, they did the data on it, and like 90% of players either didn't finish the game or failed the game. <laughs> like 90% of players. I believe that. It's oh, like, my God. Okay. It's good. It's yeah, good. that's, that's good. pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, but what's your process? How do you, are you picking yours? I mean, it depends. Like, if I'm just going to play something, like, and I know what the game is already, like, I'll pick on the gameplay loop. So, like, if there's a, like if I'm sitting down and I got, like, 15 minutes, I'll play something like uh, Kingdom Classic. Like, it's gameplay loop is, or Skyrim for that matter, game, games that allow you to choose when to stop, right? Mm -hmm. Like, all games have different gameplay loops that take different amounts of time, but I either look for a gameplay loop that fits the time I have or, you know, a game that I can stop whenever, like Skyrim. Like, you just, you escape, you know, save, you're done. You don't yeah. have to worry about anything. You're set, you don't have to worry yeah. about, like, a 
timer really on anything. Yeah. No. If, if I'm if I'm like games to record, <laughs> I'll even look at games like Skyrim where it's like there's unlimited content here. Oh my god! Uh, I'll be done at some point because. <laughs> Because you can play Skyrim forever, but I'm going with the, no, nah, I'll just collect everything and get to, you know, uh, 100% on all skills with their perks activated. <laughs> like, there's an end point in sight. It's just way, 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 it's way, like, way it's, That's like beyond, like, two years of content. That's a lot. Like, if you did an hour, if you did an hour cutting out, like, loading screens, mm -hmm. cutting out some travel time, that's still, like... That's still hours and hours. That's hundreds of hours. I'll say this. I'm at like 91. I recorded 91 the other day, which is 91 hours uh, of recorded gameplay, which I have like craft, like crafting. After the first 20 episodes, I'm like, look, y'all aren't going to want to see crafting. Mm -mm. It's just me scrolling through menus. So I cut that out. And since I have a, I did one of the custom houses, the most century located, there's one near Whiterun. Mm. Um, and I just, I built it real quick and was like, all right, everything is stored in here. Oh, I can okay. craft. I can do everything here if I need to. So a lot of times I'll like end my game like, all right, we're back at the home. I got to do stuff. You know, I'll see y'all next time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But other than like wa wanting a long term thing, it's more. Uh, my first impressions are really just like, if I, if I look at the game, and mostly I'm looking on Steam, right? If I look at the game yeah. and I'm like, okay, this doesn't have horribly abysmal like 100 percent negative reviews. <laughs> this isn't all bad, maybe. Yeah, I'll probably check it out and like. With first impressions, I might look at, like, the screenshots or something, like, to, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's in Japanese, I can't play it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, and and then for reviews, like, like so, yeah, first impressions, just well, any interest in it, I'll well, pick when it, it up. Well, that's the thing, is, like, I kind of want to bring it up. What immediately turns you off to ones that you see, that you're like, you know, I mean, other than, like, you know, like you were saying, like, the different, um, yeah. the reviews or, like, the, the, yeah. the language of the game? I mean, there's, like, doesn't really, like, okay, that's a lie. What will immediately turn me off if I like load a game and like uh, uh, SC, uh, there's an SCP game that was free to play and I'm like let me check it out. Okay. I cannot get it to boot. Every time and I'm like like if a game doesn't work, I'm dropping it. Like like mm -hmm. developers, publishers, that's your job. Yeah. Deal with it yourself. Fix your game. And I understand not all PCs are the same and everything. Like there's differences, but like I'm running Windows 10. Yeah. Like there shouldn't be an issue here. If I you're have a graphics card, like. Your game's fucked. The uh, Lords of the Fallen. It was a. Uh, it's a dark. I think it's Lords of the Fallen. I might be misremembering, but it's a. It's a Souls-like game, you know, or what all those Souls-like games. And it was kind of interesting. It was more of a dark fantasy. To me, it felt kind of like a, you know, Warhammer fantasy almost. But it okay. wasn't Warhammer fantasy. But like that was the feel of it. And it was great, <laughs> except for like, I got to like the second boss, and just like there'd be a crash like every fucking mm. five minutes, and I'm like, no. You're, you're done. Yeah. You, you should have yeah. fixed your game. Yeah. If you put it out there, make sure it's playable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and like, technical issues is, like, my major turnoffs. Like, if the game doesn't run. But otherwise, like, maybe, like, there's sometimes I'll get into a game and I'll either find out, like, oh, it's it's pay to win. Like, if it's an MMO. Yeah. Or, that, that, that's yeah. usually my turnoff. Like, if it's an MMO, I'm not really a big fan of them. I, I've never tried Warcraft. I played, mm -hmm. like, RuneScape way back in the day. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But also, like, I tried Spotor, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know that eventually became like a play to play. And I'm like, I, I just don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't want to grind for hours, and I also don't want to pour yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars into yeah. this. Yeah, I, I'm not against grind. Like, I've, I've played some WoW <laughs> when it, uh, when there were uh, some free to play servers, which you know, no comment. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, no, there's there's plenty of like games where it's like the grind is the game, and I'm like, yeah. that's great. But you have a level cap. You always have a level cap. Mm -hmm. And you get to the level cap, and it's like, well, what do you do? Oh, you just, oh, you do the end game content. It's like, okay, but there's only a certain, like, yeah. eventually you're grinding to grind and not grinding to get somewhere. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. That's annoying. But that's, that'll usually turn me off to those, because I, mm -hmm. but, like, you also, but, like, when you see, like, a, two, like a 2D side scroller, mm -hmm. you doesn't turn, you doesn't turn you off. I, I, I am, with all video games, I am less interested in, like, how it looks and, you know, how you play it, and more interested in, like, the gameplay mechanics and, like, what the game is trying to get you, the player, to do and experience in the game, right? Yeah. So, like, with, like, Kingdom Classic, like, that could be an objectively boring game. Like, or, or, or you know, I could see, because all you're doing is scrolling back and forth on a horse, mm -hmm. and you're dropping coins and picking up. That's the whole game. But 
it pairs it very well with a very, I, I thought a very vibrant soundtrack that like kept, like, it was, it was, it almost seemed like a fantasy soundtrack. And to me, the thing this game was wanting you to feel like was that you were a ruler in like either a high or low fantasy realm mm -hmm. and like these peasants are fucking stupid. <laughs> Like, the AI on them isn't great. Yeah, yeah. So, like, to me, that's what it felt like. It's like, you're a ruler in a high or low fantasy area, and no one knows how to spend money but you. Like, that's... Yeah. And it was kind of, you know, cute. And, you know, for being a free-to-play game, there's hours of content there. That's and You fair. can restart as much as you want. Now, as to, you know, how much different replayability is, because, like, there's only a few strategies you can do with it, because it is a macro strategy game where, like... If you don't do everything, you know, if you don't do X, Y, Z to protect your borders, you're dead. Mm -hmm. But yeah. One thing that we had talked about before starting this, mm -hmm. which is I, di I did want to touch on this, yeah. is The Last of Us. You said not interested in playing it, and mm -hmm. I want to know why it, that turns you off. It's not that it, does, it, it turns me off. It, it's that, like, I could get into it. Fair. Like, I've, I've watched bits of playthroughs because I was like, okay, it's, a st it's, it, it's an RPG. You know, adventure sort of, but it's not really adventure -y. Like, you are given, like, eh, this is the path, you know, or this is the path. From what I've seen, it's not very... A game like that, in that world, like, set in a post-apocalyptic world like that, I would want it to be an open-world game where yes. I could go everywhere and look at everything. And they sort of... You, you can see in different people's playthroughs that I've watched, like, there's areas that are open-world, but there's always, like, oh, the story needs you to move on. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you there's one misstep, and everyone in the entire map now knows where you are. And it's like, and, well, and, could, couldn't I, like, one person find me, and I take them out stealthily and be okay and just flee the area? But it's not as open world as it as it seems on the face. Oh, no, it, it definitely isn't, yeah. because it's, ex at least for the first one, because that's the one I played, it was extremely linear. Mm -hmm. And it was great. It was a great piece of, like, storytelling. It was a great, like... It was almost like a it was like a playing movie. Mm -hmm. It was good, mm -hmm. but like you're saying, it was it was really scripted, and it was like the the game tells you kind of at the pace to play. Mm -hmm. And while I did it did scare me, I did enjoy playing it the first time. I it's not something I'm gonna play again. Yeah, it's not something I'm gonna be like, man, I really want to go play a couple hours of The Last of Us. Like like that's not yeah. that's, it's not something I would want to do. Yeah. It's also like why I wouldn't want to play the second one. Mm -hmm. Cause like I feel like it would just be more of the same. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Cause it's, but also like this thing. I th I think about. I also I like Alien Isolation, and I'll go back and I'll play Alien Isolation mm -hmm. because it. It's... Once you figure out how to reset the alien learning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, it's. And I guess that that kind of also speaks to the main difference of the two is that there's one rather than multiple like zombies, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I. I feel a lot more engaged in Alien Isolation than I did in The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of already gotten into it, but uh, what about games recently you've been playing that you want to talk about? Um, ooh, what do I want to do? I, I do want to, I don't really want to talk about it, I guess, because I haven't released anything on it or I haven't kind of finished setting up how I want to do it, but. Um, I started doing an Oblivion yes. playthrough because uh -huh. I because I saw you doing that Skyrim and I was like, man, that Skyrim's fun. Mm -hmm. But I also got the um the game of the year edition for Oblivion, so I got yeah, like you got everything, everything, yeah. and I've never had everything on Oblivion no, before. <laughs> so now I'm super excited to try to go through that because you also helped me get the controller set up too. Mm -hmm. But um, like you were saying, I think I'm also gonna cut out like all of the alchemy <laughs> leveling. Oh, okay. Because I mean that's. I mean, I'll leave some of them in there if I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't I, know if I would leave that gameplay in there because that's, that's, that's a lot of just sitting there and yeah. matching and yeah. boring. It's, it's just menu sorting. That's all it is. Yeah. 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 I don't think I'll leave that in yeah. there. The, but, um, and like I said, the, what I'm doing with Skyrim is like, I just got a house. And then it's like, oh, you start each playthrough episode at, like, if you ended at the house, you started at the house, but you're maybe not in the same area on the house or whatever. But yeah. it's like, I would have just been here. But also... You don't. You shouldn't do what I'm doing in Skyrim, which I made the decision early on. I'll never fast travel. I'll use I'll, I'll, I'll use carriages, but I won't fast travel. Oh no. Oblivion. Yeah. You have to use you, fast yes. travel. Yes. Especially because Oblivion. Yeah, they give it to you from the start. 
Like yeah, pretty much, uh, pretty much every city, not not all the, all the locations, but like the cities. Mm-hmm. You they can give go. you you go to the you get the I know you definitely get the stables right in front of each city, yeah, which yeah, make it super yeah. easy. But uh, that's one that I'm gonna have coming up, mm-hmm. and then uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and do. Um, this is a game that I haven't I have played before as well, mm-hmm. but it's um Star Wars, Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, because. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put it on the hardest difficulty because I've played it so much yeah. and it's just, it's fun. I want to find the mod for realistic lightsaber mode, where it's like if I just touch you once with a lightsaber or you touch me once with a lightsaber, game over. Yeah, that's what I that's what I really want to play because I think that'd be very entertaining mm-hmm. and very fun. Because that's a quick game too. That's not a very oh, like, yeah. That's not a long one. Like I could do, like each set of missions, mm-hmm. real quick. Yeah. What about you? And you've got you playing that Bioshock. I've Are been got, I've been playing like like you've been going ham. I, I've been I mean, I'm trying to ease off, but yeah no I have been now I just got like a loop of videos where it's like all right I do a Bioshock I do a Skyrim I do a Warhammer Dawn of War mm-hmm. and then I'll do like a first impression or two and a review. I, it's nice though. It's nice to have a loop. It is just like I mean there's times where you get like okay I just recorded something I need to you know of course oh yeah but got, got, the. Yeah. Uh, I, it's my reviews that frustrate me or I have the most fun with, I find. Why is that? Well, I, I finished Kingdom Classic, which I was like, this is a good review. I spent probably 15 hours on it. And I try to spend 10 to 15 hours on every game I do a full review on. I'm doing Rage 2 right now. I don't want to give everything away, but <laughs> it's just a shooter. Oh, God. Like, there's an open world there, and you can go wherever you want, but it's just a shooter. Whatever. Like, you, 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 like there's NPCs in the world. At most, you go talk to them, they talk at you for a couple lines, and you maybe have a couple uh, scripted lines back that you don't get to choose. Oh, good. And all that does is put uh, adds a blip on your map of somewhere to go to do something and kill stuff. Go shoot, go shoot some stuff. <laughs> and then when you return to them, the conversation is, hey, you check it out yet? And your character's like, yeah. And that's it. Do you get like a reward for it? For checking? I mean, you, I mean, besides like going there and getting whatever is at. No, it. like all the rewards. I mean, there's some bounties that you know repopulate themselves, and all that okay. is, you pick up the bounty and it'll spawn some enemies on the map somewhere. But no, all the rewards are location based. Like you go to the location and, you know, you can pull up your uh, what is it? The, the, you, there's like a super uh, a suit you have, a ranger suit. That's what mm. it is in, in, in Rage, and you have a. You can pull up your, like, you know, notification. It's like, all right, there's storage locker here. You know, there's three of them. There's these chests here. Mm-hmm. So you know where everything is. And you actually have a – you can upgrade to where you have this vision that just lets you see, highlighted through walls and everything, mm. the stuff that, like, you need to collect. You pick up. It's, oh, like, okay. it's like – it's a shooter, and there's lots of different – there's, like – I think there's, like, eight guns. Um, and, and, and in the style of Rage, they all are, like – Every single gun, like, you can take just that gun and clear out, like, a whole base of enemies. <laughs> but the game never throws at you, at, uh, throws, like, more than 20, 30 enemies at you at a time, I found. Hmm. D- d- in between all the different locations, and I've, pl- I've beaten the game, like, there's never that many enemies thrown at you. And I'm like, you can take them on. Yeah. You get, you, like, y'all gave me, like, there's, like, four... Uh, will, will those super like moves you can do that are uh, like the one's a shield you can put up so more cover mm-hmm. one's like an explosion that you can make happen and then you can just like slam the ground and then you have your overdrive which just whatever weapon you have you activate overdrive and that weapon just like goes into an alternate fire mode and just you can decimate Dude. you can decimate enemies okay but it's like there's only 20 or 30 so by the time I get to overdrive I got like you know like 20 30 total or like 20 30. At a time. At a see. time. At so they'll, so the more yeah. will come in. Yeah. Okay. More, okay. And, okay. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're good. Stay still. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. More will come in, but not always. Uh, not, not not always like, at logical times. Yeah. That's L- fair. Like the, like there's multiple times like you'll be clearing <laughs> out uh, areas and they'll be like, all right, you open a door, all these enemies come out of nowhere after you Great. went <laughs> around the entire building and killed everyone. Now enemies are coming in from outside and it's like, it's a good shooter. I'll give it that. But like. That's that's it. That's yeah. it. It's a lot of nonsensical stuff, uh, and, and and I don't remember Rage One as much. I did play it, but that was okay. That was before my memory wipe from a <laughs> before that hard from, drive cleaning from, from a certain prescription drug that won't be named. <laughs> um, oh, but uh, they uh, Rage One. What I remember is like it was more survival horror. I thought because mm. like 
I remember that game, like, stock up as much as you can weapons and ammo in town. As soon as you leave, it's like... It, like, to me, Rage 1 felt a lot more like Metro, you know? Because, you see, you, you, were, you were describing all this, and I'm immediately thinking of Metro. Yeah. For some, like, I'm thinking about, like, Metro, yeah. the game, and yeah. I'm like... Yeah. And now I want to play Metro. <laughs> hey, Met- Metro's good. Well, the first two Metros were mm. fine, you know? But the also, second one was a little weird. But. It also kind of makes me... Like, the way you're describing it makes me kind of think of, like... Because I've never played the Rage games, mm-hmm. but it made me think of like Dead Space, mm-hmm. like how the first one definitely was much more of like a horror mm-hmm. aspect, and then the second one, and definitely the third one became a lot more shootery. Mm-hmm. I think the second one still was did a good job of balancing the shooter. Did you play Dead Space too? I watched a lot of it, mm-hmm. but it, it, it being a horror third person game, I was like, uh, uh, that's fair. That's yeah, fair. The yeah. only one that was that really got me that I will play again and again and again is the first one. Yeah. Because that one is so hard. Well, at least for me, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. It scares the shit out of me because you can barely run <laughs> all the time. And you can just see them just, like, crawling after you. Horrifying. Oh, gosh. No. No, no mm-hmm. thank you, Dead Space. No, thank you. I, 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 I've I, looked at, like, Dead Space. I'm like, it's doing some cool stuff. But, like, me, I'm out. I'm That's out. fair. I'm out. That's fair. I'm out. <sighs> may, may, maybe at some point, like, if I could. Because I don't even know. Are those on PC? It should be. Okay, yeah. I mean... Yeah, maybe at some point if they're all on PC and I can get them all there one was, little bundle price tag, uh, maybe <laughs> I might get them. <laughs> there was a... I bought, years ago, I bought a uh, like a very, like a cheap knockoff version of Dead Space called like Dead Effect oh, on gosh. Steam. And I should review that because that... I played like two minutes of that and that is hot garbage. It's so bad. It's the most generic un like attractive zombie shooter in space and i'm like this is man that's bad man yeah no other than rage really like recently the only thing i've been playing has been uh sins of a solar empire mm. which i love but it it's just it, it 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 can get too big very quickly what do you mean like the map or i mean yes but like there is no so do you know anything about sins of the solar empire? no okay. i do not it's a 4x game set in space Okay. Um, and it's kind of like Planet Side, where like no matter how many lore wise at least, no matter how many like battles or scenarios you run, the story doesn't move on. No, <laughs> the the story the story progresses or did progress. I don't know if they're even going to update it or do a new release, but like it progressed through DLCs. Like they were like, oh, you know, it's, you know, been a while. The empires have been fighting for a while. You now get Titan ships. You know, oh, okay, okay. But it's like three empires. Like there's like humans who are trade and fortification you know they're good at that and then there's the advent which are humans who are like oh y'all aren't in touch with like your purity and religion or whatever and like your psionics okay and so they are psionic power which means like they can really push culture and like each of the empires has their strength and then there's the barsa who are just like we're fleeing to something we're not going to tell you all about it <laughs> okay and we're, we're we're running interesting and then each faction as a rebellion uh, has a rebel faction that mm. can that you can play. So there's like six factions in total. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the the game really like if you look at it was kind of made for like PvP. Mm, like okay. like pretty much everything not has like, a, a counter to it essentially. Not like a a battle royale sense, but like like a like a real time strategy. Okay. Yeah. Four, okay. Yeah. Four X exploration, expansion, exploitation, extermination. So like, it's, that's what you gotta look. Yeah. Okay. I but gotta look into it then. It's uh. There, there, there's no uh. There's no pause. <laughs> and that's kind of game. Well, yes, I would agree <laughs> with you. Real time strategy shouldn't mm-hmm. have pause. But when you get on the point of, because I think their largest map, and you can map designer, and I, 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 was doing, I was doing map designer the other day, and I maxed it out to like 500 planets, and that's where my computer can run it at. <laughs> that, see, this is, this is the kind of 4X I want, where you have like four, 500 ah, planets to take over from I want a whole, people. I want a galaxy. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but like, oh, shit. Sorry. The, their standard, like, their maps like max out at like 250, right? Mm, okay. But even on that, like, to me, if you get more than like, 20 planets you have to be able to have a pause button because otherwise <laughs> otherwise there's like no way to effectively control all of it right okay but I, and i guess i guess with pvp 
that would be more of a fair playing field. Mm -hmm. But when you're a human playing versus AI, (laughs) and the AI is... Although one credit I will give to AI, they don't usually like... Because you have a limited number of ships that you can build. Like you have... I think it's supply points or something. There's a limited number of ships you can build, and all ships take a different amount of supply or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. AI very rarely, like, commits all of their ships at one time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. To to me, it seems the AI is more of a divide and conquer, which works, but it's also a weakness if you know they will only divide and conquer. Yeah, if they're never going to do, like, a full, like, a salt or anything, that's kind of, yeah, it's frustrating. Also, I always play as the the human's TEC, the tech, Mm. just because they get a star base that you can deploy in a gravity well. And, And the map is multiple gravity wells around each planet what whatever and mm. you get to them through phase lanes so not realistic at all but <laughs> it works it works it works for the game hey, no, it's okay. um but you can deploy these star bases and like i think maximum they get like i think it's like twenty thousand hit points or something it's ridiculous okay and like even the capital ships and titan ships usually only get around 10 uh, 10 000 hit points hmm. and that's without the shields on them damn and you can deploy two of them so you just put two of them in every in every place, and it's like okay, unless they come out with me with like multiple capital ships, I think I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Yeah. You got any of the games you wanted to talk about that you've played recently? Planet Side Two at all? Uh, I haven't. I'm planning on some Planet Side Two. We need to we need to plan on some Planet Side Two. We do. Because I because oh I want to play some. Mm-hmm. I'm, I because I need to beef up my um. What are you class wise? I think I was heavy. Not the not the big mech dude. No, no, well that's a max. That's a max, not yeah. the max. Yeah, uh, you can only pull a certain amount of maxes because they require yeah, resources. The, the, I always call them credits. Is that a, is it? So there's certs which you use to upgrade your equipment. Okay. I don't know what they're called. I, I think it's just nanites for okay. You're pulling, right. Yeah, for, yeah. for pulling vehicles and such. I also. Know. I've been thinking ever since I showed you also Project Zomboid. Mm-hmm. And like seeing all the updates they did on it, I kind of want to play it again because I'm like, you know, this is gonna be really difficult for me because it's not a game that I would play. Oh yeah. Or it's it's something that it's it's something that I I haven't really, it's the type of game that I haven't played a lot before, mm-hmm. so it'd be a challenge, but also be kind of fun. It looks like I saw you like going through it in like five minutes the tutorial, and to me it looked like E. And that's I got I got e feelings. I'm like, okay, there's a menu on the side. You have a ton of different things you need to manage. Yeah, because you have to manage like your you have to manage. You mm-hmm. can't get dehydrated. You can't get you know if you run too much. You, you can't get scratched. If you get scratched, you got to go find like bandages. You got to clean it. You got to do all this. You got to take care of your food, and it's it is a lot to manage. Now that I'm like I'm remembering it, and it's a lot of fun when you have like because <laughs> when I first played it, it was. Like they just dr- they didn't give you a tutorial at all. Yeah. They just like dropped you in the middle of like a town, and there could be like zombies around you. There could be zombies like in the room you're in, and you just die immediately. It was so much fun. No, but oh, we had like five people. And you had to like link up in a town and figure out where it is because it's a pretty sizable map. Mm-hmm. But I might try it again. Yeah, but that's it. That's all I have for ones I'm thinking about. Yeah. C- CCP. Uh, developers and publishers of uh, uh, Eve. That's what you need to add. Drinking, bandaging, bandaging any cuts your pilot may get. Although this does like kind of fall apart when in Eve you can just clo- like you have clones. <laughs> like I, if you die, your clone just pops up wherever you had him. <laughs> well, now also since I started talking about Eve to you, I've started getting a ton of ads. They're watching. It's your, it's your phone, man. I know. It's literally your phone. Look at him. And you know Siri or stuff if you have it. I turned Siri off. They're listening. No, no. Oh, the, the home devices. The, those, uh, those are those are the ones that are really bad about like, oh, we listen in every couple minutes in case you say something. It's like, mm, okay, no. No, no, thank no, you. No, 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 no. Not a fan. But yeah, no. Uh, I don't know what I'm looking forward to playing next because I'm kind of like, I'm about to pub- I'm about to do my Rage review and after that I got to pick a new game to review. I think it's either going to be, I'm not going to, s- no, I'm not going to do that one yet because that mm-hmm. one, I've, there's a game that like I enjoy but like I have some problems with like not problems just like the issues I have with it are all like okay like I understand why they did it right okay yeah like, that's it's fair. still an enjoyable experience and like I have put a lot of hours into it back when I used to play video games more often 
<laughs> but it's yeah, I'll, I'll 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 save that for like until it's finished. Okay. But yeah, no, I, I I've also been thinking about just doing a, a Skyrim review and being like, look, the game's broken. <laughs> oh my god, is that game broken? There was one time I started um. Uh, one of our mutual friends and I, we were playing a, uh, just like we were playing back and forth on Skyrim. Like he would play five minutes, I play five minutes. We just go back and forth, and. We just started the game like immediately, like a Nord, like the most basic, like Nord, two handed, and we came up across like the Thalmor Justicars, you know, mm-hmm. like people you should not be able to fight, people that I should have no business taking out. I walk right up, behead one, and then just chop up the other two, and I'm like, these are like, these are guys that should zap me to death. It was, that game is busted, I, and I love it. I, I would at some point like to look in, because the scaling in that game seems so weird to me, because there'll be time, there'll be like multiple hours where I'm playing, and like, everything's easy. Mm-hmm. And then like, nothing will change, like I won't have leveled up yet, but then enemies will just start getting harder. Weird. And it's, and it's, all I can figure is their scaling must be going off of more than just leveling. And if it's doing that, it seems, to, it, to, me, to me, the trigger's for the scaling should be progressive over time, but it seems mm. like they have stepped scaling at times where it's like, okay, you took a big step up and my XP sl- like I'm slowly getting up there, but also just get your sneak to like <laughs> in the, in my last episode, I was sneaking, which I haven't done a lot. I've mostly done a uh, light armor first. Now I'm doing heavy armor and like all the weapons and some magic, but I haven't done sneak yet. So I have one point in sneak. And I was going through this Dwemer ruin and just like one shotting everything from stealth. And I'm oh like, <laughs> Sneak is ridiculous. What you were good? Sorry, you're good. Ugh, excuse me. What were you gonna say about the scaling? I appreciate that though because the scaling in Oblivion is hilarious to me. Oh yes. Because for those of you who haven't played Oblivion, there's a point. I think it's like 15, 16. It's somewhere around in those teens. It like it doesn't matter if you do like combat or alchemy or stealth there's a point where it will no longer be like wolves and deers in the forests it'll be daedra demons centaurs minotaurs things that just want to one-shot you and if you aren't like a combat focused uh player you're dead oh yeah and it gives you no warning i mean skyrim has the same issue if you do a stealth character and you're light and you're using light armor like, your strength usually isn't light armor then because you're stealthing all the time. Yeah. But when you're traversing the countryside, oh, a dragon out of nowhere. Oh okay, God. you're fucked. Yeah, those... You're el- completely fucked. I've n- I think I've killed, like, those elder dragons oh. that show up. Oh, yeah. They just come up every time. I don't... I think I've beat, like, three in all my, like, time of playing Skyrim because they're so difficult. They show up when I'm not ready every okay, time. Okay, are elders the one with the big fat tails? I think so. Because there's, like, elder, and then I think there's, like, revenant or something that- there's the very colorful dragons. They're like usually like red and green in them, and they have yeah. like their tails are really fat. I don't know if they're elder or not. Oh god, those no. things, those things. I've taken out like three or four of Xanthar so that's far. That's such. That's such a. I do like that about. I love that about Skyrim. Oh yeah. Of course, it's like you know what, I'm just dragon at you. Yeah, and I don't. I don't know if this is something they've updated, but like I used to remember when I played Skyrim, like when it came out, mm-hmm. I used to remember dragons coming down all the time. All the time. But for some reason in my Xanthar playthrough, it doesn't seem that often. To me, to me, the more I'm fighting more dragons by either finding them, like finding their perches and attacking mm-hmm. them and getting their words. But like I think there's maybe been like I think at most five that have actually like come down on me out of nowhere and actually engage me in combat. Because mm-hmm. you'll see dragons flying around and the music will start and then it's like, oh well you're not you know Yeah, you're just you're just it's you, flight path you're just is near you, but it left and it's like, well, okay. Yeah. So, so, but no, I, I I do I do feel that as well because I remember like you're saying when it did come out, there would be like you couldn't <laughs> like you would exit a building and it'd be like, Alright, there's a dragon attacking this town and it's like, Whoa. Yeah. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. They probably, probably they probably patched it. So you can't just carry around like <laughs> thirteen hundred dragon bow. Well, pack. you still can, because <laughs> once they added in being able to legendary perks infinitely, you can have infinite stamina, magic, and health. I love it. What? <laughs> because I love it. In Skyrim, I really feel like they looked at it and said, look, the game's broken, but you're the dragonborn. You would be a broken person have in the fun. world. Go for Did it. Did you ever play a Morrowind? 
I I borrowed it from one of my really good friends for the OG Xbox. I can't hit anything. I can't I can't touch anything. I can't like I well I can't touch things, but like one it's an ungodly amount of reading because yes. none of it is there's no voice acting. Yes. It's just walls of text. And then anytime I go into combat, unless like I have to go to like the direct center of a being that is chasing me mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. moving around in front of me and try to stab him or like hold the trigger long enough for it to like register that it hit and it'll be like once every 10 minutes it is marwin is bothering me <laughs> i mean it bothered a lot of people i would say uh i know that they got taken down at one point by bethesda but with bethesda's acquisition the, the, there, there's been multiple people trying to remake both Oblivion and Morrowind in the Skyrim engine because it was, you know. Yeah, I thought I've seen people do that with Oblivion. Uh, a little, like, uh, like uh, the texture Obliv- packs. Yeah, yeah. Oblivion texture packs was easy because Oblivion already had modding in it, so you just mm. re-uploaded texture packs. It's super easy. But no, okay. there's people, like, trying to work on a full remaster in the Skyrim engine for both uh, games. okay. Now, like I said, I don't know where they were. I thought at one point they got closed down by Bethesda, but... That would... Maybe Microsoft will throw money at it now since since they bought them up. Will you? I don't want to. I don't want to give the, uh, Microsoft any ideas. <laughs> they buy us. Hey, Bill Gates. I do have a price tag. I'll tell you that. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Uh, I think. I mean, I don't really have. I don't have anything else I want to talk about. Um, I got. What do I got coming up? Skyrim, Bioshock, a. Warhammer. <laughs> How have you been liking the um? Because I also got the uh, the remastered editions of Bioshock. Yes, that's what you got too. I've been finding they look fine. Um, I haven't like I haven't like screen to screen tested them like with old Bioshock and new Bioshock, but mm-hmm. like they look better than I remember them looking. So that's the yeah. the main thing that I've really noticed because I, I played the original one recently. Um, is it's really just, and maybe that's just the game itself, just how quick the rendering is. Because mm-hmm. a lot of, the majority of, like, as I'm moving through Bioshock, all of the textures are so oh, yeah. are, are so low quality, <laughs> unless you stop and you kind of look at it for a minute, and then, like, the texture slowly comes on. That, that's probably more your computer. I haven't noticed that issue. No, no that's fair. No, but, yeah. But, but, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'll say Bioshock 1 remaster worked fine. Bioshock mm. 2 remaster, I think I told you about this, Bioshock 2, there's multiple times where the big sister comes after you for reasons yeah, that you didn't. find out later. I was having huge frame issues, frames just dropping out the wazoo whenever she showed up. So I was finally like, all right, computer, max settings on my G. Like, I was like, max settings on everything I can do without overclocking. And it runs it fine now. I, okay. don't, I, don't, okay. know, I don't know what it is about. Because all that happens is there's like a screen filter that's added that like, you know, the color, shakes the color and... you know, it shakes, color changes. She comes in, and there's other audio tracks. I don't know what that could be doing to causing such an FP, such a strain on the game, unless it's just badly coded, which well, might be an issue. But like when you say that, I think about the times, because in Bioshock Two, there's times when you, like you get visions, mm-hmm. and it'll do that kind of like filter to your mm-hmm. to the to the heads of display. Does that ever? Nope. That's the only thing that would make me think that because I'm like that that yeah. that does the same kind of thing. I mean, granted, those the, the visions you get are mostly shorter. Usually, you're not doing combat at the time. True. There's usually no big sister coming in as well. It's usually just a voiceover with like, "Ooh, this is Eleanor," you know. Yeah. I can't do her accent. It's like someone. Yeah. 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 It's, but no, it's no, very that's... posh for being a citizen of Rapture. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. I'm... Would you ever vacation in Rapture? Uh, I mean, what year is it? <laughs> Let's say it's like right before everything. Like, like right before, right before like that New Year's. Thing like, that. I'm gonna step on the bathysphere like December thirtieth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I w- yeah. I want to see what was going on there. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they'd be too friendly to me. I mean, you're white. <laughs> That's I mean, Rapture was predominantly yeah, no, no, white. Fair. Yeah, it was yeah. predominantly white people. They did. And this thing is, they didn't really make. They they did bring that up a little bit in the game. For like, as much as a game that wanted to bring up like socioeconomic points. Yeah. I wish they would have brought it up a little bit more, like they did in the Infinite one, 
Because mm-hmm. it's much more, it seems much more a part of like the, the city than it is. I mean, two, you got Mama Murphy, I believe. This is true, she yeah, yeah, yeah. She brings it up a lot, especially, um, I'm, I'm doing my first playthrough where I don't kill any. Because Bioshock 2, you have a lot more options of not killing people yes. and leaving them alive. <laughs> yes. And so far, all I've noticed is like, they'll give you free stuff later on in the game. Yeah. Like in uh, uh, the Numo tubes. I'm like, okay, but like, let's see if this happens more, you know, what all happens with this. But yeah, no, definitely two kind of touches on the race issue. No, one was very much just like, yeah, no gods, no kings. Ain't this going to be great? And you get there and everything's failed. Yeah, it was like, why did it fail? Well, people took advantage of the system. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Theme there, eh? Mm. (laughs) But nah, it's, I, because, yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. (laughs) Off in my own head. Whole little conversation with myself there. But, I mean, I get it, because, like, the first one was supposed to be a, a, a critique of, like, economic policies. And but it's just, and we're not seeing the society at its peak. Yeah. We're we're seeing it at its worst. Yeah. Well, th- well, that's what I, that's what I was excited for, and and I haven't played played it since before the memory wipe. Uh, mm. But uh, Infinite, I thought mm. like I was like, oh, you're gonna see it in all of its splendor, and you're being sent there as a white man, so you'll be able to see it in its splendor and its failings and all of this. Yeah. And from what I remember, that was very limited. It was, it was much more, and not that Bioshock 1 and 2 aren't mostly shooters, mm-hmm. but it seemed much more like, from my recollection, like you got there, you walked around a bit, and like pretty much immediately it became a shooter, right? There wasn't a lot of touring the, you know, the, the city and, you know, seeing it and everything, There's... other than the city itself, not the inhabitants. I will say, yeah, there is that thing where like you show up, you get experience like a couple minutes of... The splendor, but it does it does jump into that shooter pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But there are there are points throughout it later where you do get you get more hints of like that you become more of a witness mm-hmm. rather than kind of the protagonist of what's happening around you, okay. which is pretty cool. Oh. Which is why I, which is one of the things I really liked about Infinite, but I don't in I don't enjoy playing Infinite. <laughs> Can I suggest as to why? Why you only get two guns. Yeah, <laughs> you get like yeah. two guns, yeah. and 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 the powers are, aren't really that great. Like, like you have like the standard electric one, mm-hmm. and you have like the firebomb. Do you have bees? You got crows. Okay, that's bees. Bees, bees yeah, with got, beaks. Bees with beaks. But dude, when you got those bees in the first two, and they were crawling out, mm-hmm. they freaked me the hell out. Oh, man, man, I love I that. can't. Oh, my Troy, God. Troy, Troy, Troy. Think of this. Wouldn't it be so awesome if I were to go to Rapture before the fall? I would get that. I know you would. I would get the. I would just get the bees plasmid and be like, "All right, guys, you got some honey from me there." Oh, thank you. Horrifying, horrifying. Just seeing bees just crawl in and out of your hands. They're just chilling there. They're, They're not chilling. They are. You can fire them at people. Well, I. You can say know. bee cannon. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can just use them to produce honey. Oh my god. Just chilling in your house, like. Would they? If you, if you were allergic to bees yeah. and you got that plasmid, would you just die? Well, I mean, since it's rewriting your genetic code, they would probably just put something in the plasmid to be like rewrite the rewrite the allergy out of them. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, when you think about, when you remember, like, hey, they're just rewriting your DNA. Super easy. Man, that would be wild to do. But that's also that's what part of like the horror that I really like horror that I really liked about the first one, mm-hmm. especially with like the the plastic the plastic surgeon you first jump into. Who just is like hacking people up and sculpting them? And it's like, I could you could only imagine what's like you see what people do nowadays, and it's like, man, people could really be an alien. People could just just oh, yeah. become Clayface. Oh, well, yes, I mean Clayface was a person. Oh, I mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second, Clayface the Batman villain was a real human? No, no, he was a person. He was a person at one point. Thank you all for watching very much. Uh, Until next time, take care of yourselves, gamers, and drink some H2O. Peace.